Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In episode 19, Jeff Fritz from Microsoft discussed how one might approach migrating a web forms application to Blazor server. In episode 7, Chris Sainty discussed how routing works. In this episode of Blazor Train, we're going to put them together. Okay, so you've migrated your web forms app to Blazor. Now, how do you handle all those permalink URLs scattered across Google, Bing, and other far-flung reaches of the internet? Once your old web forms site goes down, if you don't provide mapping for those old ASPX URLs, you'll have lots of confused and angry passengers on your hands. Yes, today we're routing existing web form URLs to Blazor. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor Train. Blazor Train! All right, so I'm going to show you how to route old ASPX URLs, web forms URLs, to Blazor pages. Now, I'm not talking about migration here. Migration is a totally different topic, and it's the first thing that you need to have done so that you have your Blazor application to replace your web forms application. And now the problem is you have permalinks out there. You know, mydomain.com slash mypage.aspx, question mark, parameter name equals value, ampersand name equals value, etc. And now you want to route those. You want to capture those routes because you're at the same domain, obviously. Um, but you want to capture those routes and then route them to the appropriate Blazor page. So if you haven't migrated yet, I recommend you read the documentation which you can find here at this URL right here. So this is migrating from ASP.NET Web Forms to Blazor in the Microsoft Docs site. And you might think that they go all the way to say, okay, now that you've got your new website up, how do you route your permalinks, your existing permalinks, to your new Blazor page? But they don't. Take a look. A web forms page can often be mapped to a component in Blazor. And that's all they talk about. They really don't tell you how to do it. So I recommend starting here. Create your new site. Create your new pages. You might want to look at Fritz and Friends Blazor web forms components. I did a show with Jeff Fritz who talked about this library that gets as close as possible to creating Blazor components that have the same interface as the default web forms components do. And so I first of all recommend you go back to that episode if you're interested in this. But I'm assuming from here on in that you have a new Blazor application that you have migrated from your web forms application. And now you just want to be able to map those existing routes out there so the URLs out in the universe and Google and all that stuff will still work. So we're starting with the counter page. Imagine the counter page isn't a counter page, but it's one of your pages in your new Blazor application that you've migrated from a, a web forms application. So let's add some parameters here. Let's just add one parameter. And I'm going to add first name. Now, if you remember from the routing episode, if you're going to have a route that takes a parameter, you have to also include the default route with no parameter. And this is how you say, hey, we're going to take an argument here, a parameter, and we're going to map it to first name. And first name has to be a string parameter, and it has to have that same name that you have in the route at the top of the page. So once we have that, I've got some code here that just says, hey, if first name is not null, meaning it was passed in, I'm going to say hello at first name. Otherwise, I'm just going to display the default counter interface. So when we run this and we go to the counter page and we can pass something like slash Carl, it says, hello, Carl. Now take a look at that URL. It's my domain slash counter slash Carl. Hello, Carl. Okay, with me so far? Now. What if we had something like counter ASPX first name equals Carl? All right, you see that? 
let's say we've got a permalink out there to counter.aspx question mark first name equals Carl. Well, if I try to execute this here, I'm going to get an error. 404, not found. Wah, wah. Duh. Right. So let's see how we can handle this URL and map it to our counter page. Now, the first thing we're going to do is a little trick that I showed you in the routing and navigation episode, which is we're going to use the nav manager and the query helper to parse the query string for parameters. So yes, we are expecting this page to take parameters just like the old ASPX page took parameters. So check this little code out here. All right, so we still have our first name, but now we're adding the navigation manager and we're also using Microsoft ASP.NET Core web utilities. Also, I've taken out the convoluted logic here in the markup and just replaced it with a string display name. Everything else being equal, let's go down here. On parameters set, and this is the same technique that I showed you in that episode, in the routing episode. We are injecting the navigation manager, right? We have that right up here. So we're going to get the URI and map it to an absolute URI, just to make sure that it's not relative. And we're getting the query string from query helpers parse query. And then we're trying to get the value for first name into this first name variable. And if we do get that, then we're going to set first name equals camel case first name. And so then if we have a first name, you know, either from the query parameters or not, then we can display, set the display name to hello first name. Otherwise, set it to counter. So that's the first thing let's do. Let's see if it works using a query string with the Blazor counter page. All right, so counter question mark first name equals Carl. All right, so that works. So now all we really got to do is map counter.aspx to counter without aspx and pass in that query string. And for that, we're going to go to, you guessed it, startup. And it's right at the end here of configure where we're uh, saying app.use endpoints. And we have two default endpoints uh, that the Blazor server template puts in there, map Blazor hub and map fallback to page uh, slash underscore host. But we're going to add another one right here. So let's take a look at this. So we're calling map get on the endpoints and map get will take this route counter.aspx when we're calling it for a get and then call this anonymous method so that we can handle it ourselves. Now it is a request delegate. So that means it returns a task and it must be async. So we need to pass this async qualifier here. Therefore I have to do my some trick in order to appease the compiler or not, but I like to do it just to wait task delay zero. That's sort of my go-to thing. So here's the blazer page base URL and it's actually the URL. It's going to be slash counter plus context dot request dot query string dot to string. So whatever that query string is, we're just going to append it to counter and then redirect to that URL. So let's see what happens if we actually call that ASPX page. All right, counter dot ASPX first name equals Carl. Let me zoom in here so you can see. There it is, counter.aspx, first name equals Carl. Boom, there it is. Now, you've got it. You've got everything you need. You've got the secret sauce in startup to take the ASPX page and map it to uh, a Blazor page. And if you just pass those query strings along, then it'll work just fine. So let's add some more. Okay, so now we've got first name, first name, last name, first name, last name, message. And what's really cool about this is when we use a query string and we use parameters, we can specify them explicitly. So yes, we can do counter slash first name 
slash last name, but we couldn't really use that if we wanted to do first name and message without the last name because we're expecting them in this order. So if you just pass two parameters, Blazor's going to match this route, and what you thought was a message is actually going to be the last name. So it's kind of nice to have that sort of flexibility. So I've created a display message string here, which I'm displaying below display name. And I've got my last name and message parameters here. And now I've just extended the logic uh, that I've already got here. I'm getting the query string, getting the first name, getting the last name, getting the message. And now I'm checking to see if the string is null or empty. First name, in other words, if first name is not null, I'm going to set the display name to hello first name. And not an else, but another test here. If last name is not null, I'm going to append display name with a space in last name. Because I'm assuming, you know, nobody's going to just put in the last name. But if they do, oh well, it's just a space. And if the display name at this point is still nothing, then I'm going to set it to counter, which is the default. And lastly, with the message. So just a little bit of logic here, so I don't have to do it up there in the markup. So the startup stays the same. We don't have to change anything here. Let's just run it and see what happens. So counter.aspx, first name equals Carl, last name equals Franklin, message equals hey. All right, you know what let's do? Let me change the case on some of these. Because we're doing a case insensitive search on these parameters. Let's see what happens here. There you go. Hello, Carl Franklin. Hey, there's the message. So there you go. A very simple, very elegant, complete way to map ASPX pages with their parameters to Blazor pages with its parameters which you can also specify the, the Blazor way. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. Well, I don't know what else to say except good luck. Tell me what happens. Leave a comment on the YouTube page and uh, have a safe trip. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blazor Train!